This company was once fully owned by the CIA. It was credited with helping to find and kill the world's number one terrorist, Osama bin Laden. This company took its name inspired by Lord of the Rings, the spherical stone that helps powerful users to see what is going on in other parts of Middle Earth and communicate with each other. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show. In this decentralized stock on DeFi chain series, I want to talk about Palantir, a company that makes sense of big data to perform global decision making. Palantir was founded in 2003, following the 9-11 terrorist attack to protect the American interests. The goal is to make the US the strongest superpower in the world for the sake of world peace. But wait, it is not a weapon manufacturing company, huh? Well, in a way, it could be weaponized. It's actually a software company. Its general mission is to provide software that customers use to integrate big data from images to spreadsheets into a centralized platform where it can be securely analyzed by the users. Think about this. If the police are able to track your credit card transactions over time, for example, it is very likely that they can track a person's location based on this data analysis. Over the years, the company has been operating in a very secretive manner, as though it has a lot of things to hide from the public. And yes, they do have a lot of things to hide, since they are best known for their works with the US government agencies like the CIA. While I sort of explain what the company does, actually, I'm not entirely sure. To be fair, I bet many people are as confused as me. The main reason is because one of the company's earlier investors was the CIA. And knowing the CIA, everything is top secret. That's classified. I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. But one thing for sure is that Palantir's tech helps their customers to detect unusual and suspicious patterns in big data series, using techniques that the founders created when they were working together at PayPal. To further add its secrecy to Palantir, the CIA remained as the only customer for many, many years. Eventually, other US intelligence agencies like the FBI and the NSA started to jump aboard to use Palantir's services to track and capture terrorists, insurgents, and drug smugglers. Those dramatic Hollywood scenes about how law enforcement use high-tech gadgets to conduct operations in movies are probably showing off what the US is capable of doing using Palantir's data analytics capabilities. In real life, Palantir has been credited with helping to find and kill Osama bin Laden, the world's number one terrorist. Their tech also helped to uncover Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme and rooted out Chinese software installed on the Dalai Lama's computer. In an investment sense, this probably won't be the kind of business that immediately triggers one's interest to invest their money in. Because scaling the business too much could pose a threat to the US national security if data is compromised and its biggest client may not like it. Why, Mr. Anderson? Why? Why? Probably due to their business nature, Palantir never saw profit since its inception, although revenue growth was respectable. So, in order to attract investors, they knew they had to expand. And over the years, Palantir had extended its services commercially to big corporations such as Airbus, JP Morgan, BP, and many more, helping their commercial customers to monitor employees who might go rogue and identifying potential manufacturing flaws in a factory. As you can see, the software that Palantir develops are meant to crunch really big data. So naturally, most of the customers are multinational corporations that buy into their services. To understand everything that they face, whether it's their customers, their supply chain, downtime, geographic where there's growth, where their competitors are gaining market shares, so on and so forth. There's so many, just like a, like, Infinity. Today, commercial customers make up half the company's revenue, a growth percentage that makes a lot of companies draw to just look at it. <laughs> Since the company deployed their strategy, losses started to narrow and investors are projecting that perhaps now is the time to consider Palantir to be included in their portfolio. The other major change within Palantir is that it didn't have a sales force in the past. Well, they didn't need to because government agencies would continue to give them jobs. Now, it's different. They are building out a sales team to capture more commercial opportunities in the market. In 2019, Palantir spent a 
whooping 61% of its revenue, not in R&D, but on sales and marketing. During the COVID-19 pandemic, many businesses suffered, while many others thrived as well. Palantir was one of them. The company has formed a few new partnerships such as the NHS in the UK, helping the agency to track the spread of the virus and allocate resources. Where to allocate the PPEs, when to reopen the economy, all the pieces of information has helped the UK to manage the health crisis more effectively. The point I want to make is that Palantir is really designed to thrive in a crisis. So when there's a new crisis outbreak anywhere in the world, and if that part of the world is an ally to the US, chances are Palantir will seize the opportunity to grow in those areas to increase the profitability of the company. So far, we have touched on the greatness that Palantir has brought to the world, particularly to the US. As you may be aware from watching my previous videos on stock investments, every company has its own challenges. Palantir is not spared. Earlier, we talked about how Palantir software could be weaponized. To give you some example, JP Morgan started using Palantir software in 2009 to monitor employees who might go rogue. However, the bank's special operations lead use it to spy on their own top executives. In another case that happened in 2018, a protest broke out against Palantir in response to their contracts with Immigration and Custom Enforcement ICE. The objective of the project was to crack down on illegal immigrants through workplace raids. But in the process, it caused families to separate at the border. And because of that, many Palantirians became upset and they left the company. I quit! What? There are also arguments that law enforcement agencies are over-policing the minority neighbourhood using Palantir. I think as a business, it is important to always be neutral with politics. Being neutral increases the confidence of customers to entrust their data with their counterparts, especially those that possesses a huge amount of private data. One example is that we talked about Google last week. For Google, it has backed out from controversial contracts with the Defence Department to stay politically neutral as a business. But for Palantir, the government is their biggest revenue source and they really claim to be above the political fray. No, not really. Nonetheless, Palantir's financial performance is too good to ignore for investors. They got 2.3 billion in cash and very little debt. And recently, they became cash flow positive, which gives them a lot of flexibility in business. Some people may think that Palantir's business is limited to large institutions since their software and products rely on big data to perform, something that small businesses don't have access to. While that is true, it is said that the total addressable market grows globally is around $120 billion and Palantir merely scratched the surface with 1% of the market captured today. The best part is that there aren't many competitors that could offer what Palantir does today. At its current stock price of about $19 per share, Palantir is underperforming the S&P 500 after experiencing a 30% decline over the past month. Why is that so when we have just painted a rosy picture in the past 5 minutes? Why? Why? First of all, Apparently, investors were concerned by the lower growth rate for the company's government business compared to previous quarters and limited traction in its commercial operations overseas as well. Separately, the increasing hawkish stance by the Fed amid rising inflation is also hurting high multiple software stocks including Palantir. Although Palantir's revenue growth may cool off versus its historical levels, the longer term earnings growth potential looks good. Nice. Palantir sees itself growing revenue at 30% plus over the next five years as both its commercial and government businesses continue to expand. There has been criticism over Palantir's stock-based compensation to companies' executives, which could dilute the earnings per share of the equities. But then, margins are looking up. Even after taking into account stock-based compensation, currently, operating margin is standing at 32% for the first nine months of this year. This number is an improvement from around 11% last year, meaning that the company should be solidly profitable as revenues continue to soar upwards. As mentioned earlier, Palantir has been ramping up its direct sales force and shifting from a highly customized deployment model for government agencies to a slightly 
slightly more standardised model for its commercial customers. With that, I think Palantir is set to do better, especially for the commercial business going forward. Moreover, the company's international operations, which remain muted over the second quarter of this year, could see a recovery going forward as economies begin to open up with spending by businesses poised to look up. That's all we have for today. Hashtag